Hey guys, this video is going to go over um, an introduction to the order of operations. So you need to make um, a note somewhere. You can title it order of operations. It can be in your notebook or in notability. All right, so one question that you might have is why do we have the order of operations? What's the point of it? So to help show you why, I want you to go ahead and try to solve this problem. I want you to push pause, see what you get, and when you're done, you may push play. All right, now that you've tried it, I just want to show you that if we did not have order of operations, people could solve this in a lot of different ways. Maybe somebody's going to come through and do a 4 plus 2 is 6, and then maybe they're like, oh, now I'll do 8 minus 3, and I'll get 24, and then I'll do 6 times 2, which is 12, and then they'll work it out this way. Maybe they'll say, let's do 24 divided by 12, which is 2, and 6 minus 2 is 4. Okay, that's a possible answer to this problem. Somebody else might come and do this first. They might do just go straight across. 4 plus 2 is 6, and then it says take away 8. So 6 take away 8. I'll just tell you, I'll add the opposite. It's negative 2. If I times that by 3, I get negative 6. And then it says divided by 6, which is negative 1. And then it says times 2, which is 2. Now this person got negative 2 for an answer. All right, so so far I got 4 and negative 2 for two different answers. Now somebody else could do it a different way. So the reason we have order of operations is so that we all solve problems the same way and that we end up with the same answer. So it's kind of like a set of rules. So order of operations, what I like to draw for order of operations is something called the order of operations pyramid. Now in previous years, you guys might have had um, something called PEMDAS, um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, but we're going to be adding more to that. So from now on, we're not going to use that. We're going to use this pyramid. All right, the very first thing that you need to do in the order of operations is anything that is inside a grouping symbol. So grouping symbols include parentheses, brackets, division lines. It also includes absolute value symbols. All right, so those are the different types of grouping symbols that we're going to work with this year. So you need to do those first. Okay, after you do inside the grouping symbols, you still need to follow the order of operations inside there. Next comes um, exponents, uh, square root symbols, and something called cube root symbols as well. Okay, so anything with an exponent, a square root, or a cube root, which those are basically sort of like grouping symbols. So these things kind of all go together. That's the next step. Okay, after you do inside there, you need to do multiplication and division. So I'm just going to draw a time symbol, okay, and division. And you need to make sure you go from left to right. So whatever one comes first, you have to start with that. If you see multiplying first, you do multiplying. If dividing, then you do dividing. So left to right. And finally, the very last thing that you do at the very end is you add and subtract Again, you have to go from left to right. If subtraction comes first, you do subtraction first. If adding comes first, you do adding first. So here is our order of operations pyramid. This is the order we need to do um, our problems in. All right, before we get solving some order of operation problems, I just want to give you a couple key definitions. The first one is called an expression. We've already been working with expressions, but the definition of an expression is a combination of numbers, variables, and operation symbols. So here would be an expression. Uh, 4x plus 3 minus 2. That's an expression. Okay, or maybe you might have 3x squared minus 2 or 4 plus 7. Those are all expressions. Now within that expression there's something called a term. Okay, terms, these are very important. Terms are the parts of an expression that are separated by adding and subtracting. So if I wrote this one out, 4x plus 3 minus 2. My terms would be everything that is separated by adding and subtracting. So here's my adding sign, here's my subtraction sign. So here's a term, here's a term, and here's a term. Okay, if I do another one, let me do this one. 3 times 2 minus 4 divided by 2. Okay, my terms are everything, subtract, or everything that is separated by adding or subtracting. I see my subtraction sign. So 3 times 2 that's an exp or that's a term, and 4 divided by 2, that's another term. So terms are the things that are separated by my adding and my subtracting symbols. So let's go ahead and check out these problems. Let's, let's see if we can circle the terms. So I want you to push pause, and I want you to see if you can circle what you think the terms are. After you've done it, push play so you can check. All right, so the first one, 
again, I'm going to go through and look for my adding and subtracting signs, which I see right there. So now my terms are everything um, right outside of those. So 4 would be a term, 3 times 2 is a term, and 8 divided by 4. Now you can see all that I have left that I did not circle were this subtraction and this addition sign. Okay, let's come to the next one. All right, so here's an addition sign. All right, so I know this right back here, that's going to be a term. Okay, now inside this division problem, I can still have terms. So up here, I see a, sub a subtraction sign. So my terms are 10 and 3 times 4. And on the bottom, I'm going to have some terms as well. Here's a subtraction sign. So my terms are 4 and then 8 divided by 2. Again, they're separated by those addition or subtraction signs. All right, and let's go to the last one. All right, I see it. here's an addition sign. Okay, so again, here's a term. It's multiplying, okay? Those two things kind of stay together. Now, I just want to point out that when you have something inside parentheses, um, you do inside there, so there's this is just kind of counts as a term. You got to keep that kind of together. And then you also have the 3, which is times it right by itself. When you're inside here, then you also follow the order of operations, and you can split it up even more. So my 5 inside and my 2 times 4 go together. All right, so those are terms. Now I'm going to show you what it actually looks like in a problem when we're solving this. All right, so my very first one, I have um, a problem, and I need to evaluate it or solve it. So first thing I'm going to do is come through, and I'm going to identify my adding subtracting signs. Okay, my terms are everything else that is kind of left here. I'm just going to kind of circle those. Okay, this kind of goes together. Now, order of operations. First thing I check for, is there any grouping symbols? Okay, so do I see any parentheses, brackets, any of that kind of stuff? Well, I do see parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside here. So that's not really a parentheses. That's just telling me that's a negative 3. Okay, so I'm going to move on. My next thing to check, check for, is there any exponents? Nope, don't see any exponents. I'm going to move on. Next, comes multiplying and dividing from left to right. So I'm going to kind of go through and right away, I'm going to start at the beginning. I see some multiplying, so I'm going to do 2 times negative 3. Well, that gives me a negative 6. Okay, took care of that. I like to write it right below it. Okay, I'm going to just rewrite what I have now. Plus 5 minus negative 2. Okay, now I kind of notice that I don't have any multiplying or dividing left, so I'm down to adding and subtracting. I go from left to right. So what I like to do when you're down to adding and subtracting, here's kind of something that I always do. I like to change any subtraction to addition. That way I have all adding left. So if I kind of start this, I'm just going to rewrite it. I have negative 6 plus 5. I don't like subtraction. I'm going to change it to add. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. All right. Now it's all adding. It doesn't matter the order you add. So I can add anything together that I want. So if I look at this, I'm going to put my positives together. 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay, I use those, plus a negative 6. And finally, negative 6 plus 7 is a positive 1. And there's my final answer. All right, let's try another one. So I see that I have my terms first. So I'm going to find my adding, subtracting signs. Here's an adding, here's an adding. All right, so first thing, I'm going to circle my terms. I have a 3 back here. And then this is between my adding symbols. And then this whole thing in parentheses kind of goes together. Okay, so those are my three terms. Now, when I'm using the order of operations, first thing I look for is parentheses or grouping symbols. Okay, I do see some parentheses this time. That means I need to do everything inside there, but I still have to follow the order of operations. So inside there, let's, I'm just going to kind of rewrite it. Inside there, I have to see, well, what am I going to do first? If you look at your order of operations, do you do your multiplying first or subtracting? Okay, well, you guys should know multiplying comes before adding and subtracting. So I'm going to do 2 times 3 first, which is 6, and then it says take away 4. Okay, well, 6 minus 4 is 2. So I took care of everything in parentheses. That's all gone. Okay, now I don't see any other parentheses, so I'm just going to rewrite what I have. 2 plus, it says 10 divided by 2, and then plus 3. Okay, so here's my terms. I have this one, 2, I have 10 divided by 2, and I have 3. And you guys should notice... The in-between there are my adding and subtracting symbols, which are just adding here. All right, so I did my grouping symbols. The next thing I want to check for is, is there, are there any exponents? Nope, don't see any. Okay, after that comes multiplying and dividing. Well, this just says plus 2, plus 3. Here's dividing, so I need to do that next. 10 divided by 2, that's 5. 
Okay, there's no more multiplying and dividing, so I'm just going to rewrite what I have. 2 plus 5 plus 3. All right, now all I'm left with is adding, and adding and subtracting comes last, so now I can just add. 2 plus 5 is 7. Okay, use those. Plus 3 equals 10. So my final answer to this one is 10. All right, now that you guys have seen a couple problems, um, what I want you to do is you're going to answer some questions on the order of operations form that you can find in Schoology. And I'll just tell you, this is going to be one of the problems that you do need to work out. So I want you to try this in your notes and come up with an answer, and please make sure you show your work. All right, so make sure you do this problem and then submit the form.